Hello. Hi. Hello, hello. How are you doing? You look so gorgeous. Staying at home, relaxing completely. Are you relaxing you or too, are you not stressing about work? No, not stressing about work at all. In fact, but uh, just getting a lot of housework done because there's no house help, uh, and uh, yeah, so just getting down to doing all those things that I haven't done in many many years. And uh, part of me is enjoying it, and part of me is finding it really tedious. Also, honestly, <laughs> because I'm I'm now figuring how much I depend on the help I have and how much work they do for me so that I can. I can continue wow. doing my own work. So yeah. tell me, how is this phase going on for you? Since how many days have you been at home? Oh, actually, I think about uh, almost ten now. I've been going. Last week, I used to go out for shorter runs, um, but this, I mean, since the last four days, even that has stopped. I've been running in my building. Uh, it's quite a funny. Okay. Me going round and round, taking many circles <laughs> of my own building, <laughs> which I've never done so before. People have loved um, your role in Mirzapur. They are writing it over you. Yeah, yeah I know I'm, Mirzapur. So, I have to watch Thank this. Thank you, guys. I've heard a lot of good things about it. Oh, you haven't watched I, it? I haven't watched, I have it. watched it. I have to watch it. I was too much into Delhi crime that I'm actually waiting for Delhi crime to come up soon. But let's see yeah. how things blow yeah. up. So also, like some of your uh, films shootings had come to halt. Uh, I mean, yes. you know, because of the coronavirus and all. So, yeah. uh, were you on the sets when you know something like this was? You know, decision was taken on this, and you were informed about it. Um, I had actually finished shooting for Delhi Crime, my bit in Delhi Crime actually, um, and uh, I was scheduled to leave uh, four days later for a shoot in UK for a new film. Uh, but that was uh, cancelled months before things got uh, um, difficult here because things were worse in UK far before uh, it got bad for us. Uh, so that that was called off earlier. Um, but I just managed to finish my work in Delhi crime and head back to Bombay at the time that all the all shoot all shoot stop happening. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. So uh, tell us something about you know about the projects you're working on. We see a lot of projects you have. You know, in your platter. So tell us something about you know. Give us some experts, you know, excerpts on uh, on these projects. And what interests you in choosing projects which are completely different? You know, like the kind of films and the kind of projects you are doing. I don't see you completely like running for you know a masala entertainer. It has content. Mm -hmm. It has subject to it. So what is your thought process when you are selecting such movies? You know, funnily enough, those are the projects that have come to me, and I always feel as actors, as artists, that. the work that you truly desire comes to you you know it finds a way of getting to you because i think somewhere deep down you really seek that kind of work um and also i mean once i started doing uh, uh, uh independent films and um a, a lot of people in the same circles watched it uh, and therefore i continue to get the same kind of work which was uh, more about the content than who is spearheading the project um but i think things have changed a lot since then i think a lot has even mainstream cinema has become about the content you can no longer have a bad script which work you know um so the, i think audiences are much smarter and their desire their desire is for a variety and their desire is for something which is um uh, exciting to them uh, something which is uh, uh, which sort of uh, satisfies their intelligence so i think that uh, there's no longer room for uh, 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 things that are not well written uh, that's my opinion on it uh, so there's a lot of good work out there um, and i'm happy to be a part of some of it i think delhi crime is something that i'm very very proud of um it, it's a uh, show that uh, uh, it's a story that needed to be told and i was also very proud of the way the director the writer the editor the cinema cinematographer chose to tell that story because i think it was told very sensitively it's a very sensitive issue it's been a case that the whole nation feels very strongly and emotionally about um and after i'm glad we were able to do this sorry after 8 years they got justice also so what do you have to say on that like yes. after 8 yes. years of struggle finally nirbhaya got justice Yes, I mean uh, it is it, it is a reinstatement in uh, in 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 the uh, in the system of justice in our country, and um, uh, and and also the uh, the whole show was from a point of view that we had never seen before, which is from the the point of view of the Delhi police. Um, so.
I think it's just uh, and with the uh, uh, in with a certain set of people, I think you can get called by them for other roles. That's how this whole industry functions. Everybody sort of functions in their own uh, groups that they feel comfortable working with. But I have to say, in the last three years, all rules have been dispelled, all uh, norms have been shattered, and I think. There is there has been experimentation on every kind of front, not only in terms of content, but I think also indie actors are becoming mainstream actors. Mainstream actors are doing independent <laughs> work, so I think those boundaries are very blurred now, which is a very good thing, uh, in my opinion, because then it's it's game changing for everybody. Everybody gets to try something new. I have never ever said no to a mainstream film. I just haven't had. Uh, I haven't. Been offered a part which has been meaty enough, in my opinion. So I'm still open to it. Okay. Whoever's listening out there, please, hmm. I'm I'm quite open to doing it. It's not something <laughs> I have said no to. I just the 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 kind of role that I was looking for has not come my way as yet. But somewhere, do you feel like the content or digital is more meaty and content worthy as compared to what you see on big screen? Somewhere, you know, there is some kind of lack. you know of content which is happening of late on you know big screen there are many big movies which has been made but after you watch it you know somewhere you feel like what was it about you know the content is somewhere missing in that you mm-hmm. somewhere feel that you know the same way do i feel that you know there should be proper scripting sorry sorry do you somewhere feel that there should be proper scripting on you know on the kind of you know movies they are making and the kind of you know subjects they are choosing um i think there's a lot of experimentation on the kind of subject in the uh, internet space in the digital space which is great but not to say that all of it has been good either right yes. <laughs> there have yes. been some shows which i feel were not really um, uh, worth it uh, so there's not there's no all good in the in the digital space either and i think i would have agreed with you uh, maybe about two years back in terms of cinema and content not being Uh, as good as it could have been but i think because of the digital space writing has finally got the due that it deserves and finally got the importance that it deserves now we have credible writers we have writers rooms people have understood that uh, a well written job is half done you know so yeah. i think that translated back into films and a lot of very interesting films are being written there still are those films the intent of which is to be a a, a non thinking big boy The box office hit, but that's the they meant to be a different kind of business, you know? so, and and enough people enjoy that also while they sort of consume um, uh, good content and good writing as well. So I think uh, there's space for every everyone to coexist, and that's a very beautiful thing. That for me is uh, uh, is, is very exciting to be um, working at a time like this where there are mainstream films which. possibly are not so sold on uh, content and there is a lot of very good content work also so you can choose to be a part of both you can get an opportunity to be a part of both and all kinds of things and also i think uh, there is a multiplicity of genres i mean there is um, uh, something like a police procedure like delhi crime something like uh, um, uh, mirzapur something made in heaven all of them equally um uh, successful so um, uh, i think it's a great time yeah. also what do you have to say about corona virus and how you know how much are you reading about it on a daily basis are you like completely updated on what is happening around us in terms of corona virus have you seen like you know how people actually you know were on the streets and they were playing garba they were dancing and they were doing all these you know stupid things on the road what do you have to say about such things what are what are your thoughts Yes, I've been following all the updates. I think it's very important to sort of uh, aware of what's happening because it's changing very, very quickly. It's rising very quickly, and uh, that is worrying. Um, and I think it's important to sort of receive all that information, but also not give in to a sense of doom and gloom. And uh, but at the same time, behave responsibly. I think uh, there is a lot of information, but we don't know what. Nobody knows what exactly is happening. There are Sticks all over the place. Uh, I read six articles in a day. Three make me believe. Uh, three panic me. Three don't. You know. So um, I think it's important. I've just understood that it's important to receive all the information, but uh, uh, try and remain positive and also behave as responsibly as possible. Um, uh, which is to stay at home, not go out for things that you don't need to go out for, because we don't know how um, uh, this is going to rise. um i hope that there are enough testing centers and i hope that enough 
people who have complaints are being tested. Even the statistics on that are largely unclear and keep changing all the time. Um, uh, so I'm as confused as anybody else is, but uh, I'm trying to not give into a sense of gloom and uh, remain positive. And uh, uh, so I'm trying to keep my mind occupied as much as I can besides doing housework, besides that a lot of reading, uh, which I haven't had a chance to catch up on. Which watching books a lot are of you show. reading as of now? Which right is, now yes, I'm reading, your interest. Uh, right now I'm reading a book called Paper Moon, written by a Bombay-based writer called Rehana Munir. Um, it's been published by Harper Collins. It's a very, very beautiful book. So if you get a chance, you must get your hands I on that. Should. I've been I've watching a show. I've up like in a few books because I don't know till what till when are we here. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I, Jeff, uh, you know, yeah I know. This is a, I, I think it's important to keep a mind occupied and important to remain healthy. So pull out all those home workout apps that you guys have never used, <laughs> and, which you always thought you were going to use. But and do, I, you I, somewhere, do you somewhere believe that, uh, you know, people are saying, they're cracking such jokes that this quarantine phase is going to make us fat? Because all you're be, doing is, is going to make you fat. Like, you know, you're going to put on weight during this quarantine phase because you're just eating good food made at home. You're just like, you know, uh, you know, sleeping around, taking care, like just taking a nap and all, you know, after the naps and everything is happening and you're just eating and binging and eating. Is the I'm case actually, the I don't know, I think to each his own, but I think for me, I'm exercising far more than I get to on a working day. Okay. Uh, <laughs> usually I'm struggling to fit in a workout and... Uh, uh, and shooting, which is like one one hurdle in my professional life, I've not been able to overcome. Ki shooting ke saath saath kaise workout bhi kiya. You know, it's very hard because shooting hours are so long. And uh, yeah. when you're in Bombay and shooting, you have to travel up and down. So most of your day goes there. So I'm working out a lot, actually, and uh, uh, keeping healthy. It also helps to sort of uh, uh, deal with all the information that uh, that you're getting, which is, which is not... Um, um, uh, very uplifting you know so i think it's important for everybody to do that uh, uh so i continue to do that i'm working out far more than i do on a regular day <laughs> <laughs> but somewhere do you feel that this will have a very terrible effect when it comes to the economy already the economy you know was you know slow down and all and now after this somewhere like we might suffer a lot because you know things are not open businesses are not open you know factory workers are also suffering a lot there's traveling issues and all. What do you have to say on that? Because, you know, somewhere that it can is, have a very bad effect. It is a worry. And in fact, it was a, a big worry last week when we were all, everybody was struggling with the idea of whether to shut down or not, whether to stop working yeah. or not, whether to cancel shoots or not. And I think it's a very hard decision for even policymakers to make at this time, you know, whether to yeah. uh, uh, ask and for a lot of uh, uh, to ask for a lockdown or not, there's going to be a huge impact of what we what we've already gone through, and I do, we, none of us know how long um, it's going to last. I just hope that we manage to come out of it. I mean, I don't have any answers at this point uh, because I don't think anybody does. Um, yeah. But uh, we can only hope that uh, we can only behave responsibly and and do what we've been asked to do and contribute in our own way of not uh, uh, help help stop spreading this. You know. Um, but somewhere, so, yeah. somewhere, do you feel, Rasika, that you know, like uh, citizens should also be responsible? Like right now, Kanika Kapoor's case, which happened that she's been tested, you know, mm -hmm. positive with coronavirus. You know, there's no clarity as such whether she went before ninth or she came after, you know, ninth. But because of that, you know, somewhere people are, of course, like trolling her a lot, and she's also blessed with like three kids and all. What do you have to say on this overall case and like how you know somewhere you feel that you know people need to understand that this is not a small you know disease it's going to take life of many people if we if the person affected is meeting other people also of course i i i'm not i'm unaware that people are not aware of that i think they they are aware of that if you're not aware of that yet then um, i mean you're really living under a rock because uh, 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 the seriousness of the situation is very clear to everybody and i mean uh, why risk it anyway, you know? Uh, I think it, it's very um, uh, unfair and irresponsible if we don't follow um, uh, the basic rules of, uh, of isolation, of uh, uh, going out or not, washing your hands, um, all of that. I mean, that's something that 
we should all be very very careful with that i don't know how many times i've washed my hands <laughs> <laughs> your washing hand has become a like you have to do it the moment you wake up you just have to go and wash your hands <laughs> you know it's it's important to sort of uh, uh, follow the basic safety rules around um uh, what what has been told to us over and over again over the last 10 days so i don't think there is any uh, point in being virus rebels in any way <laughs> i think that the even if you are not if you're panicked i would say relax please do not go and hoard things and uh, make make it make everything uh, uh, worse for other people i don't think that's the correct way to do it either i don't think you should panic either but i don't think you should take things lightly either i think it's very important to find the balance where you sort of keep your mind occupied keep yourself sane receive all the information you are getting and behave in a way that you've been asked to i think um, that, i think it's everyone's responsibility they must I must un- understand that at this stage from the current lot of actors and actresses who are your favorite if i could choose who are my favorite a lot of talent actually vicky kaushal is one of my uh, uh, favorite actors uh, rajkumar has been for a while we are friends and he was my junior at the film institute and i'm so uh, happy for all the work that he's um, he's doing um, uh, tapsi is is a very very talented actor uh, and a, a very a very outstanding film i really uh, I thought thappad was a very important story to tell um mm-hmm. yes and uh, I, radhika apte of course she's been one of my favorite actors for a while so uh, i i mean i think these are the actors who I, whose work i watch and i feel like uh, um i want to push my wow okay so i before we wrap up there are some questions i'm you know uh, asking you which are lifestyle related and what do mm-hmm. you have to say on that so okay. uh Take us through your daily workout and diet regime, which you follow. At this um, moment, what are you following for your diet and for your workout? So at this moment, I do a home workout in the morning, and then I do a three-kilometer run in the evening. Since we've mm-hmm. been asked to not go out and stay at home, I've been doing it in my building, like I mentioned earlier. Yeah. <laughs> so, so a home workout could be anything. I have different apps. I have different sets that I work with. Um, I usually use body weight. I just have a yoga mat and uh, a six kg kettlebell, mm-hmm. and between okay. I manage the workout. Um, mm-hmm. uh, I also use the stairs a lot for workout. So you running up and down a seven thing is a lot of work. But even if you get yeah. six rounds. it's a very good workout so i do different things and try to change it up as much as i can so that i do one set in the morning uh, which is like a uh, like a functional training body weight uh, workout then i do a 3 km uh, run in the evening um drinking lots of water stay hydrated uh, and I, i i'm doing my regular diet which is i eat every 2 hours i eat simple things i don't believe in um you know looking for a certain kind of bread or a certain kind of fruit i eat what is easily available uh, so that uh, even when i'm on shooting schedules it's not difficult to get you know um and i'm not putting any extra pressure on anybody to find me something which is not available in even a small town or a small store so i try to keep that simple i eat uh, simple regular food i'm just having a hard time getting back to cooking as <laughs> <laughs> i say you cook food <laughs> because i haven't cooked regularly in a really long time and um, uh, i'm enjoying it though i have to say uh, cooking is very therapeutic and uh, everybody's been sharing so many recipes uh, so wow. i'm trying to follow some of them in fact a uh, bunch of my friends sorry yeah. you have tried sorry? some recipes sent by your friends uh so yesterday i tried a recipe of a tomato chutney which turned out quite well actually and wow. uh, the next one i want to try is some, something that mini mathur shared on her instagram she's a friend of mine and she shared aloo ka achar which i thought was very interesting <laughs> so i said make time I, try for this for sure yeah and so a group what, of uh, friends yeah. and i have, uh, have a, a video class tomorrow morning on uh, where one friend is teaching all of us how to make uh, pav bhaji <laughs> Wow! <laughs> so Mumbai's <laughs> local food is something what you're going to have. One of the local yeah. dishes. Yeah. yeah. What about bada pavs? <laughs> huh? What about bada pav? 
between pav bhaji and vada pav i think uh, uh, pav bhaji oh, is, uh, is is my ideal real puri and pav bhaji that i i, I crave for being in the entertainment business is not that easy for sure so how do you deal with stress like how do you de-stress yourself mm the one thing that i find very uh, uh, useful and always works for me is a long run uh, you know you have to push myself to get there when i'm working really hard but once i'm there there's nothing more therapeutic than that and uh, i think i totally enjoy it even on days that i um, i I am busy. I try and push myself for at least a five kilometer run. It de-stresses me like nothing else. So that's one that's thing fun. I I, I really that's enjoy. Uh, when I'm working lots, unfortunately, it's not possible. Uh, it sometimes becomes difficult for me to binge watch a show, but that's also something that really stresses me. Wow. So, uh, what are your favorite healthy snacking items, like food items? What do you prefer for snacks? Uh. um i really like makhanas i think they're very healthy very filling um and uh, sort of takes care of your binge needs you know how you just need to keep eating something sometimes when you're watching something or reading something so yeah. i'm i'm a big binge so okay <laughs> so i can't so you have to look for it you're going to finish it off ha huh, sorry if you're watching a series you're going to finish it off yeah you know i have to sort of disassociate from the idea of Even when I'm reading, so even when I'm reading yeah. a script, I feel like I need to keep going like this. So makhana is always a good substitute wow. to take care of that. One food uh, item you begin your day with. One food item I begin my day with, uh, yes. fruit. With fruit. What? Fruit. Which fruit you prefer? Like fruit. what do you like to eat? I usually I'm not fussy about it. I, it can be anything. I try anything which is easily available. I mean, whatever seasonal, easily available. I uh, don't usually eat too many bananas, but that's why. Okay. <laughs> but if I, if, for One example, dish. if I have an early morning shoot, then I like to start with a banana because it takes care of uh, my hunger for a bit. <laughs> One dish you cannot resist. One dish I cannot do is chola kulcha. Okay. I'll drop any diet in the world to eat it. <laughs> and you can make it too? No, no, no. Yeah. There are too many. As you can, you can chola. This is lovely chola kulcha in so many places in the world. I don't think I should. <laughs> I should even attempt it. <laughs> and what's your breakfast uh, essentials? What do you have for breakfast? Huh. What do you prefer? Boring. I'm very boring about breakfast. I have any any preparation with egg white and a toast. And chai. Chai is important for you. Coffee. Right now, coffee. I I have phases. I go through six months of only coffee. Sometimes only chai. So right now, I'm in my coffee phase. Oh, okay. Wow, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Actually, to know. And your most memorable food experience, like you know, having that food and you just like you know, oh wow, heaven. Or like you know, going with friends and you know, some memorable experience you had with them. For oh, so many, but I think uh, the one that really stands out is uh, um, again chola kulcha man. I'm so obsessed with this chola kulcha. Oh, thing. I think chola kulcha in Amritsar. Are the streets of Delhi? Uh, in Amritsar, when I was shooting for Kissa once, oh my God! I think I was really craving it. And when you're in Punjab, <laughs> I, you're constantly hungry because you can only smell food around you. And there was this one day we were shooting outside in a small village, and it was really cold. Yeah. And uh, a village, man, a very fresh sag is getting, right? So there was like there's like fresh <laughs> sarsong ke khet and all of that. So I told this lady from the village once. I said. um uh, you know i really want to eat fresh sarso ka saag so she said theek hai aap aana ek din aapke liye banaungi and i forgot about it i said pata nahi usko yaad rahega nahi rahega and i also got busy in shooting and uh, we were shooting one night and it was really cold this was close to the border uh, um, uh, in a village close to atari actually and uh, suddenly she turned up with this tiffin with sarso ka saag and makki ki roti Wow. On a cold winter night, when I was on a <laughs> night shoot, I cannot forget the smell when I opened that dabba. Mm, that that <laughs> sarso ka smell. I don't think I've smelled it again ever after that. That that kind wow. of fresh sarso, I'll never forget it. 
wow okay now you're tempting all of us right now yeah my mouth is watering <laughs> yeah i'm sure one dish you cannot resist uh, no that i asked you already street food which you cannot resist one street food bel puri bel puri yeah 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 i can't live without it i have to keep eating it from time to time <laughs> acha five mm. things that are there in your refrigerator always five things that are there in my refrigerator always um takri cucumber um Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Peanut butter, I have to admit. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Super free peanut butter. <laughs> Low fat yeah. cheese slice. Okay, my diet is suddenly not sounding as healthy as I think it was. Slim <laughs> diet. I told you, quarantine. This quarantine period is doing <laughs> magic on you. <laughs> so peanut butter. Um, uh nimbu um uh, peanut butter nimbu did a uh, slim milk and uh, what else did i say cucumber eggs i'm sure eggs egg yeah egg and bread yeah. so one dish which you cooked and you felt like it was really very awesome really very and what complimented very good in taste very awesome I make very good khao sway actually, because my parents grew up in Burma, so uh, we we used to eat khao sway growing up. So you know, I I always believe that things you eat growing up, you you inherently know the recipe of them. <laughs> you don't need <laughs> much much direction in that. So uh, and people uh, not a lot. I, I until recently, I think not a lot of people knew how to make khao sway. Now it's more, much more common than it used to be. um so yeah and i make a very good burmese salad also so yeah oh wow all my exotic okay. cooking comes from burma wow yeah actually and they really <laughs> have very good food for sure now i think <laughs> i somehow feel like this interview is more of food for sure <laughs> you know every interview i do becomes about food man <laughs> really <laughs> we were, yeah we were once you're promoting <laughs> Oh, I, I, just, I don't know how the conversation steers there always. Yeah. But we want promoting the show. We want promoting the show. And this girl who was taking us through the promotions uh, yeah. said, "You know, I just want to tell you. After we did about five interviews, she said, 'I just want to tell you, this is not a food show.'" <laughs> okay. I said, "Yeah. I, I thanks for the reminder." <laughs> But of course, food is life. Like people love eating. We all love eating. But somewhere, like, what do you, uh, you know, which is your favorite restaurant in India? Like, which one you like? Uh, right now, it, it it keeps changing. But my um, uh, go-to restaurant is for a long time was Smokehouse Delhi. I I used to feel like I was treating it like my cafe. <laughs> There's this fish <laughs> there called John Dory, which I really love. and they make a very um, uh, very nice one um uh, but the one that i'm totally tripping on right now is uh, one called sequel which is also in bandra it's got lovely healthy very fresh tasting food uh, so they have something called a macrobiotic bowl which is which is like sprouts with anar and a little uh, wow. with curry patta very nicely cooked and um, some vegetables on the side very nice meal Well, some healthy, uh, very interesting flavored meal. So, what are your plans? Like, what are you going to do? Like, because till thirty first March, mostly we are going to be, you know, we are going to have this lockdown. So, what are you planning for? You know, for I have weeks? big plan. <laughs> okay, big plan. And what is a big plan? I don't. I don't, I don't know. know. Any of I them are going There's to succeed. In your head. I don't think I don't know, but I've I've also realized that I have to start making meals which are uh, like one dish is a meal because otherwise I'll only be cooking all day because I have no help right now. So I'm doing everything from washing, chopping, everything, you know, wow. which is great content because you know you realize how much you leave to other people or you take for granted. Like today I realized I haven't washed dhania in a while. You know somebody always does it and give it give it to me <laughs> if I have to cook. Right, 
So I was like, nah, okay, I have to start, I have to do everything from scratch. So I decided yeah. that if I have to be wise with my time, it has to be one dish meals. So pav bhaji is tomorrow because that's a dish on its own. Wow. So I think the day after is going to be sambar, sambar rice. So that's also wow. and if you got some salad on the side, I think you're fine for one meal. Yeah. So I'm going to attempt one dish meals. That's my main thing from. Uh, for from the, tomorrow for the next two weeks <laughs> yeah yeah and course, i think like that's like running and walking out too <laughs> yeah yeah i think between because cooking and consuming all these things you're working out as well yeah i'm working right. on more than i do, i do normally and i don't think as yet i'm eating more than i normally eat okay in fact the housework is keeping me so busy and i'm so conscious that i'm going to waste my time that i've sort of you know made a schedule for myself and i wake up in time and i'm reading i'm also getting a lot of sleep which i haven't had the opportunity for in a while so i think i'm making up on a lot of lost sleep uh so i've kept time to um which is your to... favorite sweet like that what do you like to have favorite sweet favorite sweet here yeah. favorite sweet oh you know my favorite one is gur sandesh i love it and you know, i'm going to <laughs> make sure that we all <laughs> Just keep on craving for food. <laughs> oh, Bengali sweets are my favorite yeah. sweets. And if I go to if I go to yeah, sweet really. Bengal, I go nuts. Like I feel like you know sometimes like I can just go and window shop there if I. <laughs> yeah. I'm like I'll just look at it all and I'll be like, "Bas, yeah, mera like pet mil gaya." <laughs> Sabka pet cooked ho gaya ab. And they have they have this one uh, uh, sweet called jol bhara. I don't know if you know what. Yeah. So when you yeah, break yeah. it, uh-huh. all the liquid gur gur comes out. Oh, it's too good. <laughs> <laughs> I think this conversation is really going to be very foody for sure. But what is your skincare tip when you're at home, and what do you prefer to do for your skin, for your hair? How do you take care? Uh-huh. How do you pamper yourself? you know i constantly think about doing all these very healthy things and all these homemade things i never get down to doing it i finally end up buying any product that my makeup artist recommends so okay. um uh, so i totally depend on her whatever she is. and she's a she's like a uh, you know like a foodie she's a creamy <laughs> she is just obsessed about looking up new creams and Yeah, trying out things from here and there, trying sample packages, figuring out what works, what doesn't work, and she's always she like she's got one theory ready for everything. So I totally rely wow. on her, and I keep telling I keep telling her that you know if you've messed up, I'm really going to blame you. But right now <laughs> I'm using this one cream called Egyptian Magic, which is doing wonders to my skin. Um, it's uh, slightly greasy and oily for Bombay weather, but up until the winters, uh, and we didn't have a bad one this year, so. uh it was and also in a lot of cold places i was in delhi and before that i was in kunur and so i it was working well for me for those climate okay. okay so rasika i'll not take much time of yours we had a lovely chat with you thank you so much for lovely your time chatting. and thank your you. sayani gupta she is writing to you rasu you're glowing <laughs> shayani shayani <laughs> i think her name is not sayani i'm very clear shayani. about her name pronunciation Shayoni, yeah, Shayoni. Okay, I, yeah, I, I should be very. That's clear. how she likes it to be pronounced. Yeah, Shayoni. Okay. Thank you so much, Rasika, for your lovely Thank time you. and for all the best Thank for your projects. You. I hope things settle down for us as soon as possible. I know. And hope I hope so. soon in, in person for sure. Yes. Yes, I hope so. Stay safe, guys. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Goodbye. Take care.